It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. To celebrate this milestone, we're taking a look back at some of the interesting stories and unique characters that we've discovered over the past three decades. In 1989, we explored the unique hardwood bottomland ecosystem of the Ingling Wildlife Management Area in East Texas. Dawn, in early spring, on an East Texas beaver pond. A wood duck rises to meet the challenges this new day will bring. Every creature on Earth has basic needs, food, water, and adequate space to live and reproduce. In short, we are all dependent on habitat. All over the world, the pressures of development carve away and otherwise alter the natural world. No one really owns the land. We merely serve as stewards. Time will judge the worth of our term by what is left for the stewards of the future. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department operates numerous wildlife management areas across Texas' different ecological zones. Here in East Texas, the Engling Wildlife Management Area encompasses half of the Catfish Creek ecosystem, one of the few high-quality spring-fed hardwood bottomlands remaining in the Gulf Coast Plain natural area. Historically, land use in this area has systematically carved away the hardwoods. Much of the area was cleared for farmland. Lumbering and firewood cutting removed additional acreage. Farms evolved into ranches as croplands became pastures for grazing livestock. Today, livestock and hay production remain the principal land use in the region. Surrounded by a sea of coastal Bermuda grass pasture lands, the Engling Wildlife Management Area is like an island of hardwood bottomland habitat, so unique it has been designated a national natural landmark. This means the Department of the Interior recognizes this section of Catfish Creek as having national significance in illustrating the natural heritage of the United States. One of the more prominent citizens of this ecosystem is the wood duck. These wood duck hens, satisfied after a morning of feeding, seek a refreshing drink to begin their loafing period. Wood ducks are appropriately named. They live in swamps and ponds and nest inside trees. Their diet, physical characteristics, and seasonal behavior all correspond to specific facets of the woodlands. Today, the major threat to wood ducks comes from the loss or alteration of woodland habitats. Well, nowadays we hear a lot about uh, the detrimental effects of flooding, stream flooding, and certainly there are some uh, damages that occur, but let me show you some things that are valuable, particularly to waterfowl and specifically here to wood ducks. It has two benefits. One, it keeps the, the main wetland out there charged with water, and that's where our brood habitat is. But there's another uh, benefit to to wood ducks, and that is when the hen is laying eggs, she has to gather enough protein and calcium every day to produce another egg, and she does that by feeding in these slack water situations. These slack water situations are full of, of uh, invertebrates, macroinvertebrates we call them. So during the egg laying process, these flooded pools are very important to wood duck production. When the end of incubation nears and the eggs are close to hatching, the hen becomes more and more reluctant to leave the nest, even during Carl's annual survey of the nest boxes. Then a wood duck hen, if you approach and she's either in a natural 
cavity or in a nest box and you can get her to jump out. She may just jump in the water or the ground in front of you and go flopping off and squealing and acting like she's crippled and just about to die. And if you're a predator and after a quick lunch, your natural tendency would be to follow this hen because there is food right before you and you can't see what's in the box. Once uh, the predator starts chasing her, she has a miraculous recovery and will fly off and leave the would-be predator wondering what happened. All of these maternal responses indicate that very shortly, something very special is going to happen in Box 98. Since all the eggs began incubation on the same day, they will also hatch on the same day. This is an exhausting process, and it may take the chicks several hours to free themselves from the shell. Finally, all the fertile eggs have produced hatched ducklings. Fatigue overcomes the brood, and the chicks sleep soundly in preparation for their introduction to the world. The next morning, other wood ducks begin their normal routine, just as any other spring day. At nest box 98, however, the wood duck hen is not so relaxed. Her chicks, hatched and dry, slept overnight, and today they are finally ready to exit the safety of the box. Box 98's Drake becomes a diligent sentry at attention, watching all directions for any predator that could threaten the brood. When she feels the coast is clear, the hen will call the ducklings out of the box and into the world. Ducklings begin foraging immediately for their first meal. They have not completely imprinted on their mother yet, and the distraction of hunger makes them vulnerable. The nervous hen calls to the chicks with the same vocalization she made earlier in the nest when the egg showed signs of hatching. Whether the hen rears the brood successfully depends on the quality of the habitat. Wildlife management areas demonstrate techniques for improving the quality of wildlife. They can also be excellent places to simply watch an ecosystem thrive. A new dawn on an East Texas beaver pond What challenges will this new day bring? And how will the decisions made today affect the wildlife that belongs to the future?